Welcome friends once again to our uh, NPTEL MOOC module on health economics. This is indeed our uh, introductory week. Uh, we have already started uh, discussing some of the lectures on um, economics of health and healthcare, why health is a you know, space, you know, important uh, economic good, how is it different than that of you know, other uh, goods. However, this is our uh, last lecture of the introduction section. Here we are trying our best to you know, give you the perspective on healthcare uh, through um, arrows, understanding arrows, you know, conceptions. Therefore, our uh, lecture is entitled as Arrows Perspective on Healthcare. We will clarify how healthcare is a special economic good, what really make, makes healthcare a special economic good, and this can be actually you know better understood if we cite the works of Aero. Um, is, is considered to be he is considered to be the pioneer in the field of uh, social choice, especially uh, when we are referring in the context of healthcare. Uh, we will be referring all those details in our uh, slides as well as we will discuss. What we did in the previous lectures, especially in the two uh, previous two lectures are the following. We clarified health as an economic good, why it is called uh, economic good and its um, you know differences with uh, non-economic good. We also differentiated um, economics of health and economics of healthcare. Uh, usually you know the basic um, understanding is on healthcare, but it is not necessarily it is completing the entire uh, you know discussion. Health is not always an, uh, you know, a subset of healthcare, it might be addressing different aspects and perspectives. So, sometimes it addresses the you know health in the aggregate sense, sometimes we uh, target to clarify the specific programs which are target, um, indeed you know focused enough and uh, that is part of economics of health. We have clarified that. And we also learned uh, that you know health economics is more uh, you know complex than it seems since you know it has uh, you know, various dimensions and there are risk component attached to the healthcare. Therefore, it has deep rooted dimensions. In this lecture, we will be focusing on what makes health and healthcare different from other economic good. What is it that makes healthcare? special. To answer the question, we will uh, look uh, to understand the perspective from Aero as I already mentioned, Aero's perspective on healthcare industry, which I also uh, discussed in our very first lecture uh, and also mentioned about Aero that he is a pioneer economist, he is a topmost economist who also had you know paid great importance on healthcare. Now, the contribution of him is, is focusing on uh, the healthcare industry and also uh, in comparison to uh, other economic industries. The lecture will act as a base for our you know further lectures because in other uh, uh, units, other weeks of our module, we have covered different sections. If you have started explaining some of the concepts of uh, arrow or Debreu theory, you may not just uh, understand everything at this moment. You may have to read our um, other specific lecture As like an you know, insurance will all, I will also try to relate like behavioral economics ok, so where you will clarify things in a better way. So, now who is arrow? Who is uh, arrow? Uh, we are actually referring to his entire period. Um, of from 1921 to 2017 uh, and the pioneer work, uh, the pioneering work which is famous is actually due to his PhD thesis ok. In around 30 years of his age, he submitted the PhD thesis and I will also clarify what is that all about. So, Arrow ha was a you know theoretical economist with extremely broad and diverse you know interest. Uh, his contribution range beyond the boundaries of economics that largely include you know programming you know mathematical programming and simplified versions are also presented in different books. 
and those programmings um, not just cover the economic issues, it also um, includes uh, political and social philosophy. Apart from uh, being one of the pioneers of health economics, his two major contributions include uh, impossibility theorem. We usually study in you know general equilibrium analysis in later part of our advanced uh, sections of our microeconomics, and this impossibility theorem was actually understood and then become popular after his thesis was presented and, and submitted and uh, arose it was referred to the year 1951 and as it was called doctoral dissertation. So, the mathematical proof of the existence of general equilibrium was also uh, mentioned in along with Arrow, Debro is also attributed in the year 1954. Okay. So, these two are considered to be the best contribution existence of general equilibrium and impossibility theorem. We will clarify all such details in our respective chapter uh, in, in our unit. We have different chapters as probably uh, I did not tell you uh, in every uh, section in, in we have discussed everything in, during our uh, introduction lecture uh, that in which section comes at what time at what unit. We will be discussing large and equity and health in one of the units, unit number 4. Okay. And um, so, unit number 4 with the title like you know defining equity and equity in health, behavioral health economics and uh, you know even uh, somewhere we will also emphasize uh, some extension, extended version of uh, those theories in terms of demand and supply perspective, especially on demand issues. And we also evaluate those, uh, uh, those, uh, those aspects. I think uh, you will come to know better in a, you might have uh, understood from our introductory lecture. Now, <coughs> what is Arrow's perspective? Uh, it is similar to other uh, major contribution, uh, but in this case like his other you know, two major contributions that we, we have just discussed. Um, uh, the lack of a complete market has also been a central theme in the economics of health care. Every time we used to refer uh, market conditions. Now, do not you think that this is an often the case there are some uh, features of the market not perfect. Okay. So, complete uh, uh, non uh, non complete you know market features led to uh, some kind of complexity in the uh, evaluation of healthcare or, or that is um, in the discourses of economics of healthcare arose 1963 uh, paper especially on uncertainty and welfare economics of medical care is a foundational work in health economics Ex uh, he has also explored how healthcare differs from typical uh, goods and services. Also, he derived and uh, you know opined that healthcare is uh, you know um, basically concluded that healthcare has you know unique traits hold special position in economic analysis. So, the problems uh, in healthcare industry is just, you know differentiate from welfare economics. How far uh, this is different than that of uh, the welfare economics arrow broadly highlights three healthcare uh, you know industry specific problems that is clarifying these two discussions. Uh, three uh, specific uh, aspects that led to or arrow broadly highlights three uh, you know healthcare industry specific problem leading to market failure. So, uh, as uh, the simple meaning of market failure where the you know the the, the given context of the market the you know different features of the market led to injustice uh, some form of injustice or some um, forms of you know uh, biasness towards some of the uh, stakeholders. We, we clarified in our respective section at this moment I am trying my best to you know give you directions related to um, healthcare industry as against you know, welfare economics differences and the problems. Uh, now these three are information gap, moral hazard and adverse selection. So, here is our uh, first uh, perspective of arrow uh, uh, related to information gap. 
so here uh, basically uh, the problem li lies with uh, you know how information works and how it is actually not uh, clearly reaching to the stakeholders with reference to arrows work the problem of information gap is due to the fact that information possessed by the physician is necessarily much greater than that of the patient or at least so it is believed by both parties further both parties are aware of this you know informational inequality and their relationship is you know uh, colored by this knowledge so uh, as a result of this particular problem uh, as a result of this problem of information gap which we have started discussing individuals indeed do not know the quality of care they will receive from the doctors especially when specialists are involved it is important to find good doctors since the incompetent doctors can cost you uh, cost you your life but finding good doctors is time consuming and is difficult for consumers so uh, one way it is expensive or maybe you know uh, creating huge disturbances another one uh, through information uh, when you find your good doctors that is create, uh, creating indirect cost in terms of uh, time consuming and and, uh, and and also indirectly expensive so arrow solution to this problem when information gap uh, persist uh, arrow uh, you know perce you know perceives entry barrier as the sole method to mitigate uncertainty so in this case entry barrier really uh, you know matters one of the uh, directions as proposed uh, as i mentioned that licensing prerequisites ensure that physicians have received medical training and possess medical competency so if licensing is guaranteed that this is uh, made as a prerequisite or is mandatory that means the you know patients will have a strong confidence on the medical system and uh, and, 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 and 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 hence you know a regulator can do it better if we just leave it to the market market may not be actually guaranteeing uh, this uh, you know uh, perfection in the licensing uh, uh, you know prerequisites so that way it is again linked to the market you know market not necessarily 100% ensuring the best licensing structure so uh, arrow mentioned it very clearly that uh, licensing prerequisites are necessary to lessen the information gap especially at the entry level unlike milton friedman we are also referring uh, at this moment uh, the works of friedman on licensing requirements who regarded this as a means to establish a government sanctioned monopoly leading to reduced supply and higher prices so uh, yes when we are actually guaranteeing licensing mechanism it is considered to be you know valid in the international context that you know government uh, eventually became the um, monopolist and and and, and when that is somewhere you know guaranteed is yes, that might compromise the supply and then also <coughs> eventually raise the price level of the consultations or, or care and then believe that market competition would eliminate incompetent doctors so in in friedman as contrast to the you know arrows work we just mentioned that you know if uh, we leave it to the government that might be monopolized hence you know that will have negative imperfection negative you know implications however market may guarantee um, you know e eventually eliminate you know incompetent doctors if consultations are not if if patients are actually not visiting those doctors so in that case market may correct but it depends upon who is kind of you know um, consumers you have or the patients you have and how the income is actually flowing how the market is uh, all about if the market started with a you know st stable situation then obviously uh, friedman uh, uh, ideas of eliminating the uh, you know erratic component in the healthcare system is is fine but aero specifically mentioned and consider the unregulated medical uh, you know market akin to risk risky game of Uh, some of the examples we cite uh, russian in you know, our uh, roulette 
uh, even it is highlighted in the picture that does not serve society's interest. As I just mentioned, society's interest is, is multiplex, is very complex and the starting assumption is, is important. So, the unregulated mar ma medical market may be a very risky you know game. So, uh, this is how we have highlighted the game, game which used to be very famous in if you search in YouTube you will find number of, of this Russian roulette. Basically, the you know the specific bullet when it is turning to be uh, affecting another person is, is not guaranteed. Therefore, uh, you know the the expectations of that uh, you know managing of that risk is very high. Okay, so therefore, in this case, arrow highlighted this in societal context. These uh, market based uh, you know approach may not be right. So, licensing requirements is considered to be good. Uh, second problem uh, as we have already mentioned to differentiate uh, the work uh, as we have highlighted in three important aspect uh, arrows you know uh, three healthcare industry specific problems that second one is called moral hazard problems. And uh, in that case the behavioral aspects is large emphasized the morality of the person is emphasized. It might be the case that the person considered uh, you know or interpret differently when the person is, is in a very separate zone which used to be the case in healthcare market. As we used to see the case uh, in, in, in um, you know insurance market we will also explain in detail with its detailed diagram how demand cost shifting and it is the final contracts in the society or to the buyers are considered to be you know very you know less paying or the net loss is considered to be very high. We will be discussing in our um, respective chapter especially on insurance chapter okay you, uh, that is uh, unit number 5. Uh, so, uh, arrows 1970 uh, 70 or 70 in work introduced the concept of moral hazard in the healthcare market. Moral hazard suggests that insurance alters individual behavior by reducing concerns about consequences of their actions. Okay. <clears throat> like here we have cited uh, you know another example, but I will now let me clarify uh, at this moment that uh, when somebody is insured like you have been given you know free health checkup certificate maybe through Ayushman um, Bharat you know scheme if that um, you know card is with you even if with this minor uh, you know disease or minor ailment you will feel that since no you know specific burden or at the point of uh, you know disease you need not supposed to pay you have a already payment structure and the premium is pretty low and borne by largely by the government in this case um, you know there might be overburden you know overuse of these resources and that is only due to morality you know the mo moral condition and that could have been actually corrected at, at home only and uh, the morality of the person led to over dependence on the hospitals and that might lead to supply side constraints okay. Uh, even if supply side constant is not there still over dependence on healthcare is, is an issue that is raised through moral hazard. Another recent example will be happy to highlight is called uh, you know the subprime crisis issue uh, bank deposits etc are, are whenever are in, insured enough. We have actually you know insured our deposits to the bank, but bank uh, may not utilize the funds. Okay. The uh, may not utilize the funds in a best way or the market uh, may not be guaranteeing the best return to the uh, to the banks where bank utilizes funds. But uh, when it is insured this raises the likelihood that the banks might engage in risk lending. So, when bank utilize all our fund and uh, we are actually less concerned where the bank utilizing our funds. This might you know and you know uh, uh, eventually end with some risky you know lending issue uh, ultimately resulting in economic challenges which happened in the recent uh, evidences like in the subprime crisis of 2000 uh, the entire period is 2007 to 10 the most uh, tremor was felt in 2008-9 okay 
uh, you if you remember the crime, prime value of the assets reduce you know significantly in us market especially for the real estate okay and real estate considered to be the you know best uh, uh, invested sector where over loans were issued so over loan loan up issued by the banks but the deposits were actually you know submitted or the or, or by the by the you know uh, by by the individuals uh, considered to be insured but that has led to since because of you know over uh, what what we call over guarantee by the banks with the assumption that bank is actually insuring everything led to you know misuse misuse of the fund by by the uh, you know uh, re, uh, loan seekers so that has led to some forms of collapse which was evidenced but the most important site uh, the example we used to give it is called moral hazard in healthcare sector even eros work also emphasize the behavioral perspective uh, um, related to healthcare uh, so ero asserted that in case of healthcare moral hazard can be such that individuals with insurance may engage in riskier behaviors since they expect their medical expenses to be covered which i already mentioned as a result of this problem of moral hazard in healthcare a phenomenon would be uh, created leading to an increase demand for health services and higher healthcare spending okay uh, so uh, so 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 moral hazard actually leads to what we already said increase in uh, demand for health services and also the health spending increases so there are indirect cost as well though insurance covered some of the cost but uh, since one uh, you know segment is guaranteed or insu insured so that has led to other incremental cost as well ero suggested uh, solutions to this problem as well uh, to deal with the moral hazard in healthcare so when we say it is of uh, uh, you know um, fully insured individuals with very minimum or negligible payment as premium uh, or one time payment is given or if single payer is 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 given in that case to avoid this co co insurance can be uh, can be a solution is is a solution as proposed by aero uh, in that case you know co co insurance this this means individual pay a significant portion of their healthcare cost as well okay and even it 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 it, it, it might be in in different phases as well co insurance encourages less risky behavior and resulting in fewer health issues and decrease national healthcare expenditures it has been already evaluated by many uh, research papers you know these authors in their paper how moral hazard problem actually has caused you know higher expenditure co payment you can also take a research problem in your work that how far co uh, payment or co insurance um you know is is correcting the problems of moral hazard the third problem this is on moral hazard problem this is what we have discussed about uh, about uh, the information gap the third one is here is called uh, you know the adverse selection issue as adverse selection they are all connected market failure uh, which is explained in uh, Uh, different microeconomics books. Special, I will refer to uh, Holverian uh, introductory microeconomics as well as advanced microeconomics books. That is simply called microeconomics analysis. You please read the chapter called adverse selection. It is a, it is a result of uh, you know uh, of of information gap. It's also a result of moral hazard issue. It's also this leads to the problems of market failure. the final problem in the healthcare market uh, aero specifically mentioned on uh, uh, adverse selection and this is really you know arises this, this really arises uh, uh, because information about uh, about their health you know uh, individual specifically individuals or the patient possesses more information about their health than the insurers so uh, what what is the context here that when the individual patient possess more information than the insurer 
insurers usually you know set a premium based on average you know calculation okay average best evaluation method so that amount is actually imposed as a amount um, for premium however in this in the, in the in reality individuals are actually not same individuals there are very clever individuals they are, they, they 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 are also um, um, you know uh, they can easily um, you know um, divert the attention of the insurer uh, specifically i am referring to the high risk individuals who are motivated to conceal health you know problems to avoid increased premiums so uh, and and uh, the the in, uh, insurers acquire inf information uh, if insurers try to capture all the information from all the individuals it will be very expensive for for the insurer therefore in insurers follows an average method okay usually average uh, you know uh, risk is is considered to be the method for calculation of premium high risk individuals those who are uh, about to take some consultation of the doctors they will prefer to take you know you know insurance premium but they conceal at the time of buying the you know uh, scheme uh, so the premium they are paying is is relatively lesser in society like india uh, or even in in, uh, in in indian context uh, the low risk individuals are are you know more in percentages okay and they hardly go off for you know purchasing insurance policies okay uh, so <clears throat> what really happens uh, in that case uh, the the payment made by them is, i mean the low risk individuals is, is or the, the options they are opting for it is very less so what really happens the number of sellings uh, as as insurance scheme or the the insurance insurer cannot able to actually market hugely especially what uh, what happens here if premiums are set based on average risk which i already mentioned high risk groups buy more insurance and low risk groups buy little or no insurance leading to losses for the insurers okay so this is what we wanted to mention and uh, this is largely due to the inf information gaps with the insurers uh, to uh, overcome this kind of loss the company will raise either rates rates of the premium again uh, that that is resulting more low risk individual avoiding insurance if they simply increase the rates if the rates are increasing they will actually compromise the number of uh, you know uh, subscriber okay so aero suggested a solution to this problem of adverse selection propose that these problems can be resolved with a single payer system okay single payer system so who is a single payer is it uh, is it uh, the individual or is it uh, the uh, the the regulator or uh, you know in a single payer system everyone is covered by one health insurance plan okay all are covered nobody is going to actually be differentiated from from treatment and differently okay hence uh, there is no advantage of hiding information by the individual while purchasing the insurance policies okay so to this eliminates concerns about low risk individuals leaving the system and the es escalating cost of insuring people so this can be this problem can be easily tapped due to single payer system such examples we have also mentioned UK especially they have national health service scheme uh, Australia and Canada it is medicare and Taiwan it is national health insurance so uh, national health insurance in um, in 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 in, in uh, Taiwan so these are uh, uh, a single payer you uh, know uh, solution based models and aero actually already proposed long back each of these problems will be discussed uh, in our uh, specific you know unit as i already mentioned so special characteristics of healthcare market aero argued that the um, you know fundamental feature of uh, medical uh, or healthcare is uncertainty that has led to even information gap led to even moral hazard even lead to the problems of adverse selection He stated that distinct economic challenges in healthcare are a response to dealing with this uncertainty 
So, uh, even uh, some of the works of Muskin is very relevant, even Arrow follows the works of Muskin. Um, uh, arrow highlights how uncertainty shapes the special characteristics of the healthcare market into five parts. Emphasizing the nature of demand, expected be behavior of uh, physicians, then product uh, uncertainty, supply conditions and pricing practices. Okay? So, in, in these five directions, uh, arrow highlights how uncertainty shapes the special characteristics of the healthcare market, why healthcare needs special attention. So, this is largely explained by these five important aspects. So, we are now unfolding the discussion of these five aspects, I am not discussing between the lines, some of the points I may leave you to read. Okay. Especially coming to nature of demand, uh, the first difference uh, of the nature of demand is that uh, why economic uh, health is considered to be an economic good and it considered to be special is that you know health care uh, and health specifically is, is irregular and unpredictable health demand okay? and uh, or not like you know other uh, economic good. And uh, uh, demand for medical services often involves a significant risk to personal integrity. Similarly, uh, the risk includes possibility of death and substantial impairment you know, of normal functioning. One pr uh, prominent you know, concern is, is the potential for a significant loss or decrease in earning capacity. Okay. You know, once it, that is damaged, it has a you know, uh, perennial impact, it, it leads to a generational you know, loss okay, that might lead to and for the earning capacity. While risk are not exclusive to medical care, necessities like food can be ensured uh, by adequate income unlike the guarantee against illness. Illness represents not just a risk but also carries inherent cost aside from the medical care expenses. Okay. Another uh, you know, aspect we need to uh, mention at this moment is called expected behavior of physician. So, uh, that really matters, you know, um, the, uh, the expected behavior of medical care provides greatly uh, differs from that of typical businessmen. Physicians are uh, subject to strict uh, ethical restrictions and, uh, and also uh, going by the priority. So, medical professionals are expected to prioritize customer welfare over self-interest. Uh, this is really different than that of the normal products to be sold in the market by the salesman. And they used to provide you know, uh, continuous uh, advice and treatment and uh, physicians they, they are supposed to you know, be very active uh, in providing continuous you know, advice and that should be free from self interest. And another aspect of this uh, physician's behavior is that you know they should be you know um, uh, committed enough to you know convey the best and the right information to the individual, the patient. And key distinction again is attached here is that especially in health uh, is that the uh, behavior include absence of advertising and price competition among physicians. But nowadays, you know, yes, products are rolled, even healthcare products are also rolled. We are not now referring to healthcare, we are referring to health, how it is differentiating other products. But healthcare products are actually rolled with, you know, uh, the content of advertising and price competition as well. Okay. The provision of non-profit hospitals over for-profit ones suggest a preference against profit motives in healthcare in supply. So, uh, relating to the behavior of physicians, Arrow advocated certain uh, research gaps uh, that to be quoted here, a needed piece of research can be a study of the exact nature of the variations of medical care received and medical care paid for age income rises. This research might still have potential benefits in understanding physician behavior. Another physical product uncertainty, I think uh, you can easily understand. Uh, and accordingly, you will realize how eco you know health health is a special economic good. Okay, uncertainty about qu about quality of medical care is exceptionally high compared to other commodities. Predicting uh, a recovery from disease is an uh, uncertain as predicting disease occurrence. 
So, uh, unlike most commodities uh, allow learning from experience, several inlays cases do not offer luxury due to inexperience. Okay? The level of uncertainty in terms of utility variation is much greater in several medical cases than infrequent expansion like housing and cars. This uncertainty in medical care uh, indeed exhibit a unique characteristics. It is significantly differs between patient and the physicians. Physicians possess really you know complex information which is uh, and uh, which is usually you know absent in the normal commodities and uh, uh, treatment consequences especially complex information related to treatment consequences then the patients and both parties are aware of this information gap they know that there is information gap. So, other aspects I think I will suggest you to read another point is called uh, supply conditions. Uh, the supply of a commodity depends on of course, the net return uh, the competitive uh, theory typically dictates this that supply depends on the net returns compared to alternative resource allocation. However, this competitive market deviates significantly in the context of medical care, especially we are referring to licensing restrictions exist uh, in the medical profession limiting the entry and increasing healthcare cost unlike typical competitive markets. But the restrictions on entry through licensing is not unique to medicines and extends to various other professions as well. Another note or the aspect is that the high cost of medical uh, education today which in many places are primarily subsidized and do not proportionally burden students. Especially in Indian case it is AIMS, it is highly subsidized not you know creating burden as a product is actually not rolled in the as per the market structure. Social non-market forces are also important uh, whether those non-market forces are uh, of public or private strongly influence both quality and quantity of healthcare supply. Quality control measures such as you know licensing laws, medical uh, school standards constrain this diversity of medical care offering etc. Despite the potential for substitutions, physicians really maintain a central role in the healthcare uh, segment. Last one to discuss with focus on pricing conditions. The medical profession is known for unique pricing practices. Extensive income based price discrimination is, is one, another one is historical you know, preference for free for uh, service. Uh, basically, when we say extensive income based price discrimination, this includes providing free or reduced cost services for in you know indigent you know patients whereas, uh, historical uh, preference for fee for service one is, uh, is is patients are actually billed for each specific services provided by the healthcare providers. And this opposing uh, alternative like you know prepayment such as health insurance plans etc. These uh, attitudes distinguish uh, the medical profession from business practices. The differences in pricing practices have implications for competition and price flexibility. Uh, while price competition is often discouraged among physicians, uh, the apparent uh, rigidity of prices in healthcare may not fully represent the flexibility that exists even though ethically con ethical considerations impact price adjustments as well. So, we have discussed all sort of directions to clarify errors, uh, uh, implications or the perspective on healthcare. Most healthcare systems are complex as we know and uh, the behavior of the consumers and the providers of healthcare are very different from the you know competitive you know uh, market structure for uh, any other commodity. This has two implications we discuss already. In conclusion, we are discussing these two implications. One is on uh, economic analysis, another is on reliance on on uh, unregulated ma private markets. When we discuss on uh, the economic analysis, uh, we have already emphasized the arrows uh, perspective. Uh, this requires actually you know uh, a complete thorough theoretical uh, knowledge. Whereas, uh, secondly, um, the implications of uh, the provider, healthcare providers, whether it is by government, by, by competitive forces, um, reliance on unregulated markets 
uh, for medical is unlikely to produce outcomes that are socially optimal even arrow clearly uh, you know defined it and mentioned. So, government intervention or involvement in finance and provision of healthcare is common. An important reason for this is the inherent uncertainty surrounding health and uh, healthcare. So, in short, arrows noted uh, you know, specific uh, or, or, or few characteristics of uh, consumers and, uh, and the you know, provider behavior. And uh, for consumers, he pointed out that patients do not behave in the same way as consumers. Okay. Uh, so, and they cannot uh, taste the product before consuming it. Uh, similarly, consumers, uh, um, you know, uh, as consumers, patients know considerably less than sellers and place trust in the provider of care. So, in that context, we have already discussed three important problems uh, that is of uh, which, which lead to market failure. Uh, we discuss about uh, information gap, we discuss about moral hazard issues and also we discuss adverse selection. In a, a more general sense, the interdependency extends to people caring about health of others and also uh, solves many uh, problems. So, I think uh, consumer side we have already discussed, the provider arrow pointed out that doctors do not behave in the same way as firms. We have also differentiated how the normal supply function through the supply feature or the aspect we have clarified how other products are different than that of the healthcare as an economic uh, product or good. Okay. So, they are especially uh, their entry into the industry is restricted by medical licensing regulations. And another point we discuss about advertising and related to you know um, how uh, advertising is, is actually not that much promoted and advice is so uh, relevant, ethical aspects are very important and self interest is actually uh, not uh, suggested, not an attached in this context. Treatment is uh, or, or at least is claimed to be dictated by uh, clinical need, not by financial interest of the provider. Social and ethical factors which I already mentioned is very important in, in this context. Doctors sometimes charge different fees to differentiate people based on you know high uh, high fees to high income people and low fees to low income with low uh, income category um, you know uh, and and sometimes even no charge at all to the very uh, few people which is unlike at all in the uh, normal market conditions. So these are all we have summarized. We have also concluded some of the view uh, from the arrows. I think these are very relevant for questions uh, and answers. What is there in the next lecture? Uh, in the next lecture, uh, we will be discussing on utility and health. Uh, through the introductory lecture, I hope uh, you understand uh, the logic of uh, health as an economic good or health economics in particular. So, in the next lecture, we will be discussing largely on how you know utility or the you know. Uh, state of health is defined or health state dependence etc in, in detail. Okay, so, looking forward to your presence and uh, you can easily apply uh, for your research as well. With this, uh, I think uh, you can uh, we can stop here in between you can uh, go through the readings. We have highlighted the two which uh, we have referred the most. Okay, others are also relevant for your thorough reading. Even these books are going to be useful in a next lecture. Okay, so, I think I should stop here. Thank you.